This is a how to get started guide for Deep Future. I found Deep Future a while ago, but I didn't get into it right away because I found the rules a little daunting. And once I did, I fell in love with the game. This game is awesome. So I would have played it sooner if I had a video and I decided to make this video for anybody else looking to get started. This isn't to watch it played, it's just an overview of what you're gonna do when you start playing. So to start playing, the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is print out the map from the rule book. You're gonna need some cubes or tokens in two different colors. The rules say cubes, but I don't have them, so I use tokens from Twilight Struggle. You're gonna need a stack of blank cards. I use half cut index cards, which work great. You're gonna want a pen, maybe pens in six different colors if you like color. And it's also a good idea to have a notebook nearby to record your galaxy's history. I highly recommend printing out Hearn's player aids that are in the file section of BGG. They're gonna help a lot and you're gonna be looking at them frequently. And then you want the rules nearby or on a computer. So you're gonna put the board in front of you. You're gonna put the challenges and advancements player aids on the table. You're gonna be consulting them a lot. Deep Future is a space exploration and tableau building game. It takes place over a massive time scale. And the object of each game is to achieve dominance in the galaxy through one of several victory conditions. This is a campaign game. In Deep Future, a campaign just means a series of games that take place in the same galactic timeline with the same deck. So each campaign over that campaign, every game you're gonna be using and growing your same deck of cards. In the base game, there's no way to win a campaign. A campaign is just a series of games that you will win or lose. But every time you win, a new era for the galaxy occurs, and that creates a galactic history for your campaign. You can get really detailed with your game log and create a written history of the game, or you can really ignore record keeping altogether except for remembering which era you're in. So there's six suits in Deep Future, Sun, Moon, Heart, Skull, Hand, and Foot, and six values of one through six. You write the suit and value on each card, and you do that for every combination of the six suits and values for 36 total cards. Those are now called blank cards in the rules. Over the course of the campaign, you're probably gonna end up populating all of the cards you have. So we're just writing one through six, and then each suit of the six suits on these cards as we go. After we, we do that, we're gonna be creating 12 world cards. Those are the 12 known worlds in the galaxy. Okay, so we've created all of our 36 cards. You're just gonna gather them up and you're gonna shuffle them. Your deck is starting with 36 cards, but you're going to be adding at least say 10 or 20 cards over a typical game. Um, so your deck will end up being uh, potentially quite large. Okay, so we've shuffled the deck. You're gonna draw one card. So I've drawn the two of hands. And the first thing that you're gonna do at the top of the card, you're just gonna write world zero. That means that this is a world card created in era zero, the beginning of the game. The first game you play will take place in era one. And so in your first game, if you create a world card, you would write world one. The next thing you're gonna do is generate a sector. So pull off two cards. I drew a five and a six. So this world is in sector 56. And in the top corner of the card, you're going to write that number, and then you're going to surround it with a semicircle like the bottom of a planet. So that designates that it's a world card. And then you're going to name the planet, whatever you want. I named it and her. The next thing we're going to do is create a random advancement. So to do that, you're going to select a random suit by dealing off a card from the top of the deck. I picked hearts. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to deal off another card to randomly select the value. Uh, you're then going to consult the player aid to see what that means. So here I've drawn a three, and I look on the player aid, and that's machinery. So I write the name and the effect of that advancement on the card. So I'm writing machinery and then the effect. When writing the effect, you usually want your own shorthand, so I use things like S plus one, ADV for advance, etc. Um, but you can use whatever format you want. 
okay, that world is now done, and we just do that for all of the other worlds. Give them one random advancement each. When you run out of cards when generating worlds, just shuffle the deck again. Okay, so we've created our 12 worlds, and we've named them all, and we've given each of them one advancement. As you can see, they're, they're random. So the numbers on them came from the deck. We randomly generated all their advancements, and then we named them. So now you're going to just take those 12 world cards, put them back in the deck, and then give the deck a good shuffle. I find that index cards become much easier to shuffle as you give them a bit of use and a bit of wear, um, but they're pretty easy to deal with, and you can use whatever you want. I've heard of a bunch of people using business cards. Okay, so you've shuffled the deck. Now you're going to select your home world by dealing out five cards and keeping any worlds that come up in these five cards. So I've got two world cards that came up. If you didn't get a world card, you would create a new one here, but uh, usually you're going to draw one. So I've got two worlds to pick from. For your first world, it honestly doesn't matter that much in your first game, so just pick one. And then you're going to put three cubes of, of your color on that world sector. Again, I'm not using cubes, so I'm placing a three Twilight Struggle marker in that sector. The next thing we do is we create the Neutral Worlds line. That's a line of world cards that represent the rival civilizations in our galaxy. So one at a time, you draw a card from the deck. If it's a world, put it in the neutral worlds line. I put my neutral worlds line above the player aids, but you can put it wherever you want. Now you're going to keep drawing cards, and you're going to draw any, any, any worlds that you draw, you put in the neutral worlds line until you draw a world card that has the same number as a card already in the line. So you'll get anywhere from one to six worlds, usually around two or three, but I ended up with just one here because I drew another world card with it, the same number. And once you're done with that, setup's complete, you're ready to start, deal yourself five cards, and play your first game. Enjoy!